In April and May of 1789, Mozart traveled with Prince Karl Lichnowsky, who later became a patron of Beethoven, to Berlin, Leipzig, and Dresden. Mozart was received at the Prussian court by King Friedrich Wilhelm II, who was an, accom an accomplished cellist. Apparently, Mozart received a commission because when he returned to Vienna, he composed the string quartet you're about to hear as the first of a projected six string quartets for the king. Mozart completed only three, however, and never saw the Prussian quartets in print. Their date to be issued in 1791 was preceded by his death. Mozart and his older musical friend, whom he greatly admired, Franz Josef Haydn, elevated the string quartet to the highest artistic status. It was no secret that Mozart's quartet writing was renowned, as a Berlin announcement attested, matter-of-factly, in 1785, quote, it is quite unnecessary to recommend these quartets to the public. Suffice it to say that they are works of Herr Mozart." Close quote. In his string quartets, Mozart freely experimented with combining different compositional styles, which prompted Beethoven to say about them, Mozart was telling the world, look what I could do for you if you were ready for it. It is an unfortunate fact that Mozart had to restrain himself artistically to compose much music that would certainly entertain, as for example, his light de Verdamenti. But in composing his quartets, he could satisfy his natural propensity for the rare, the challenging, the worthwhile. He expressed this basic tenet of his character in a letter to a friend saying, I should prefer all things to be of good quality, genuine, and beautiful. Lucky for us. Mozart's first Prussian quartet mops the floor with the traditional view of the roles of the instrument in a string quartet, as described by Stendhal, in which, quote, the first violin, a man, leads a four-way conversation and is supported by his friend, the second violin. The viola, a man of sound opinions, occasionally has something concise to add, while the cello is a woman with nothing very important to say, <laughs> but who adds an element of gracefulness. Well, right away, we can see that this is not our group tonight. <laughs> In the first Prussian quartet, Mozart has devised vital roles with heady challenges for all four instruments. In fact, I seriously suspect that the reason we do not hear these quartets more often may be that few players can do them full justice. Lucky twice for us tonight. To begin the quartet, Mozart writes a lovely arc of a melody, which is not unusual, but this is followed by two fragments that sound strikingly similar to the idea that Brahms used so extensively in the first half of the program. Then Mozart gives the opening melody to his favorite stringed instrument, the viola, the fellow that supposedly had little to say in traditional quartets. Knowing that Mozart wrote this quartet for a cellist, we're not surprised that the cello has an important presence, as when it begins this melody, which is then taken by the second violin.
To heighten the closing section, Mozart writes chords slightly out of sync rhythmically, a technique that you heard Brahms use extensively. Harmonically, the chords that Mozart takes us through in this quartet sometimes seem like uncharted territory. We must simply trust the master at the helm in passages like this. In the slow movement, Mozart goes beyond his normal shaping of melodies to extend one particularly beautiful line beyond where it could have ended, not once, but twice, which you heard Brahms do frequently. A very beautiful section of this movement begins with a melody played by the first violin, then the cello, and is continued through the second violin and viola. The harmonies change in midair, and the passing of the melody from one instrument to the next is seamless. Mozart creates an exquisite variety of relationships of the instruments to each other in the third movement. Sometimes the instruments are in unison, which is dicey to play, as in this passage. Mozart seemingly combines the instruments in every possible way, cello and first violin together, then viola and cello paired with the violins doing something different, everybody switching partners from whom they just played with. It's a subtle delight to follow who is playing with whom. Sometimes there are surprise effects, as in this example, where each instrument plays single notes separately to make one line that ascends and then descends. <laughs> The last movement opens with a memorable duet played by the viola and, yes, the cello. We can see how Brahms could be influenced by Mozart in places like the next example, where the violins are a counterpoint to each other. Halloween continues. There is some devilish writing in this movement such as in this exciting passage.
And now for a treat fit for a king, who was a pretty good cellist, the first Prussian quartet.